Hello, I hope you are doing well today. Spring has finally come here. Everything is so beautiful. Very magical season. So much strength and promise in it. Um, I'm having some projects that I've been thinking to draw since some time. And this sunny weather is super motivating to go outside, sit down under a tree and just sketch on. Today I would like to share with you a short story which I wrote about 10 years ago. And also this little sketch. Um, I think it can be, um, could be an illustration to, to this story. I hope you will write me if you, like, if you liked it and if I should share some more stories of my own with you. I don't have many of them, maybe five, four, and I also think of reading some of my most favorite short stories by, uh, let's say, Ambrose Beers, whom I endlessly adore, is just amazing, a short story a writer, and maybe I could do some illustrations related to those stories, but um, we'll see. Today I will read you a story which called Chickling. Here we go. Uh, every time my son would sit down with an old album, I tried to draw away his attention from a certain picture I was very ashamed of. I don't even know why I kept it. I was five years old, my son's age, at the time it was taken. The picture would be like many others, but it wasn't. All because of the terrible, hateful costume I was wearing. It somehow haunted me all my life. A frail little boy with a very sad face and a faded yellow costume of a chickling, or creature resembling it, with some sort of a comb on his head was looking from under his eyebrows at me. The year we had a Halloween party at the preschool. I remember neighboring boys and I would go to the market nearby where they rented all kinds of costumes. I asked my parents almost every day since the beginning of October to take me there so that I had a chance to choose the best costume. My friend Dennis and I would dream how I dress as a cowboy and him a policeman. But my parents were too busy and as a result we went to the market the day before the party. Sure thing all good stuff had already been rented. All my life I was angry at my parents for humiliating me like that in front of other kids. And by the way, since that disastrous appearance at the party, I got that annoying nickname, Chickling. You cannot imagine how sticky it was. I had it at preschool, high school, and up till university. And meeting my fellow students in our 10th alumni reunion, I still was addressed by the tedious nickname. But my son obviously took pleasure in torturing me. He would stare at that picture forever and would ask me again and again why I had chosen to dress like a chickling. I just shrugged my shoulders and forced a smile while he continued to stare at it. But there is no great loss without small gain. Once on a Sunday morning at breakfast, I announced to my son that we were going to the market to buy a costume for his Halloween party. My wife lifted her eyebrows in surprise. Why now? she asked. It's the middle of September, there is still plenty of time to do that. Luckily, she was not aware of my tragedy, nor knew my nickname, because after I graduated from the university, I left my hometown and moved far from it, leaving that chickling behind me. And I met my wife and we had a kid and no one knew about those misfortunes I had to suffer at the dawn of my life and through so many years. So there we went. I walked holding my son's hand in mine, anticipating revenge. When we came into the shop, I looked at all those rows of great costumes, ghosts, magicians, pirates, and told my son with an air of great pride and satisfaction, you can choose any. I, I think so might sound the voice of a king who was passing his kingdom over to his heir. My son took his time. He walked between the rows, slowly looking at different amazing things. Hats, cloaks, magic wands, sheriff stars. I admired a cowboy set and lost my kid out of sight for a while when suddenly I heard him, his happy voice. Here, Dad, I found it. I hurried up to look at what he has chosen and froze. 
and for some minute could not produce any sound. Th this one? I finally managed to utter words looking at the shabby yellow costume of a chickling in my son's hands. I tried to pull myself together. I started persuading my son to change his mind. I was running like crazy about the shop, showing him one great set after another. I mocked the costume he chose. I even tried to bribe him, promising to buy an ice cream if he changed his mind. But my son stood firm. No, I want this one. As we went back home, I was glancing from time to time at a red comb sticking out of the bag, at my son's radiant face and was confused. How can any child like something as ugly as that silly chickling thing? In the evening I came to wish him good night and ask a question. Why did you choose the chickling costume? I asked. My boy looked at me, twiddled his toy airplane in his hands and said, Well, because I want to be like you, Dad. I looked at him and a tear came running down my chin. I felt such relief which was beyond expressing. I bent down and kissed him good night. And I was leaving the room. As I was leaving the room I stopped for a moment in the doorway and whispered, Good night, my dear little chickling, and thank you. The end. <laughs> All right. Um, sometimes I think that the wounds that we get as children and those imprints, some events, uh, live on our souls. They are so so extremely deep and so extremely profound that they actually haunt us if those are bad or, you know, can lift our spirits if those were good through all our life. I have seen adults, um, people my age and twice my age crying over something, some tragedy uh, which has happened to them as children and which to adult people, you know, uh, sometimes uh, seems like, hey, big deal, but no, it's uh, always big deal. Uh, this is why um, with my own kid, I, I try to be as um, serious about his uh, little tragedies and big tragedies as possible because you can never know which which thing you can just toss away thinking that oh you know in in an adult life it just doesn't matter that much but to them it does to to us too and um so um here is I'm looking back at the drawing and I see that I started uh, adding some pencils to the watercolor. Recently I, I really like it because when I apply some watercolor pencils it makes, well in my opinion, it makes illustration a little bit more deeper, uh, some parts of it and more rich in color. And uh, because, you know, watercolors, they are very light, light. And pencil, they kind of makes them a little bit down to earth, um, if I can say so. And here is this little chickling. Um, I would like to thank you for listening to the uh, short story. And I will be very happy to read if you have any comments or feedback in, in general on the illustration on the story if you would like to hear some more or no 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 <laughs> please turn on some music um, so thank you and I hope that you are going to have a very good day or evening depends where you are and um, I will record another video soon Thank you.